Time now for the morning rush. We're learning more about a head on crash that killed six New Mexico college athletes and their coach. The NTSB says that a truck was traveling along a two lane road when it crossed the center line, colliding with the passenger van carrying the athletes and the coach. The passengers in the truck also died at the scene. New Mexico authorities continue to deal with the surge in bank robberies. Police are investigating a robbery in Santa Fe at a Wells Fargo on St. Michael's. Officials are also investigating a robbery at the Bank of the West on Central and San Mateo. A New Mexico County has now agreed to pay a man $3.75 million after he was shot in the head by the county sheriff. This is after a chase in a front end loader. Now, deputies say that McFarland, uh, James McFarland, rather ignored commands to get out after the chase. Roosevelt County Sheriff Malin Farland then opened fire, hitting James McFarland in the head. McFarland did survive and was sentenced to a year of house arrest for his actions. Erica. Here's a look at the school day forecast. It is going to be a cooler day, so wear those warmer layers. We're only making it into the mid 50s. It'll be breezy this morning through the afternoon with chances for a couple showers. A temporary rule from the FAA is giving Albuquerque ballooning companies a bit of a break that allows balloonists to now fly downtown and at higher altitudes without a tracking device or two way radio. The FAA had been forcing balloons to stay outside of a 5 to 10 mile radius of the Sunport, keeping them from some of the most scenic areas in the city. The woman whose car was used in a high profile murder of Albuquerque mother Jackie Vigil has pleaded guilty to crimes of her own. Investigators say Elizabeth Talamante's brother Luis Talamante's Romero shot and killed Vigil while driving his sister's Jeep. Talamante's was also found to be in the country illegally, along with finding drugs and guns in her home. She pled guilty to those offenses in federal court. One Albuquerque restaurant is still on edge this morning after an employee was held at Knife Point. On Saturday morning, a burrito alestante employee said that a man wearing a hoodie and a mask walked into the restaurant, pulled out that knife, and demanded the keys to her vehicle. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky reiterated calls for a no-fly zone over Ukraine and asked for more support in his country's fight against Russia. President Biden and other Western leaders have rejected that idea in the hopes of avoiding a direct confrontation with Russia, but have provided additional weapons for the Ukraine army. Albuquerque City data shows ridership on city buses is down to about 300,000 riders compared to pre-pandemic levels. To appeal to more passengers, the city has gotten rid of the fares and launched a new trans transit app with a live bus tracking feature. Erica. And here's a look at the threat index. It's high today. We'll see snow accumulating up in the northern mountains, leading to messier road conditions and some very strong winds across the state that could lead to some dust storms and some wind damage. The city of Albuquerque is in need of umpires for its softball league. They say if they don't fill the positions, they will have to limit summer softball after having to already cancel last spring's flag football league. They're also beginning to look for lifeguards and other summer positions. To apply, go to alwaysonkrqe.com. All right, here's a look at the traffic maps. Those are looking clear this morning. No accidents or slowdowns. And here's a look over the big eye. A cloudy start to the day. We could even see a rain shower throughout the morning. Well, artists are now encouraged to submit their artwork for this year's 98th burning of Zozobra poster and T-shirt. This year, the, the theme is a 90s themed celebration. Submissions are due on Friday, April 29th. You can find details on how to sign up at alwaysonkrqe.com. Can't right. wait for that. Yeah, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Time now for the five facts. At number five, the 98th burning of Zozobra is now coming up on us uh, in a few months. And artists are now encouraged to submit their artwork for this year's Zozobra poster and T-shirt. The Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe is continuing its decades project as continuing uh, the countdown to their 100th anniversary. This year is a 90s themed celebration. They're encouraging artists to incorporate the theme. That's whether it's the TV show Friends or Zozobra dressed in 90s uh, neon kind of colored plaid. Submissions are due on Friday, April 29th. Number four, temporary rule from the FAA is giving Albuquerque ballooning companies a bit of a break. The FAA had been forcing balloons to stay outside of a five to 10 mile radius of the Sunport, keeping them from some of the city's most scenic areas. But now the FAA put in place a temporary rule that allows balloonists to fly downtown and at higher altitudes without a tracking device or to a radio. And at number three, we do have this winter storm coming in. Snow and rain is spreading into the state very slowly. We'll see that snow intensifying throughout the morning up north. At number two, the NTSB will be back out at the site where a deadly head on crash killed six student athletes and their coach from the University of the Southwest in Hobbs. The crash happened just after 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening in Andrews County, Texas. The NTSB says that a van was traveling along a two lane road when a truck crossed the center line colliding with the van. You now the six players and their coach were killed while two other players survived. The, the university is set to hold a press conference today starting at 11 this morning. 
Finally, number one, this morning, members of the sports community in New Mexico and Texas are sharing their grief for those who died. They include 26-year-old coach Tyler James, 19-year-old Mauricio Sanchez, 19-year-old Travis Garcia, 21-year-old Carissa Rains, 18-year-old Lacey Stone, 22-year-old Jackson Zinn, and 18-year-old Tiago Sosa. Dayton Price and Hayden Underhill survived, but they are in critical condition at a Lubbock hospital. Coach Tyler James was from New Mexico. He just started at the university in August.